Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pirate Cove Philippines. As uh, any of you viewers who know my videos, you see I'm out in the rice fields again, so you know that this is going to be an information video. Okay, but this one's kind of important. Uh, it's been on my list for a little while to do, and it comes up often in the uh, uh, Facebook groups. Now, <clears throat> Facebook groups is where I do get a lot of uh, uh, research and information from because I contact and I'm in touch with expats all over the Philippines. So I'm able to gather a consensus of what's uh, really going on and what all is affecting people. So that's why you'll hear me sometimes refer to Facebook groups. And it's, it's a good way to get information and you can also get that also yourself by joining these groups. So uh, today uh, I wanted to go into uh, banking and LTO. LTO is the Land Transportation Office. That's like the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles in the United States. That's where you get your license and your registration done. So, uh, over the last couple years, there's been some major changes to both of these items uh, concerning expats or foreigners altogether. Uh, it started two, two and a half years ago, both of them about the same time. Uh, first, I'll go into the LTO. Okay, so to get a driver's license here, uh, first off, you, uh, you can drive here on your current license, if it's current, uh, like from the U.S., U.K., uh, you know, Australia, Canada. Uh, you can drive up to 90 days, as long as your driver's license is good. Okay, now, for a longer stay... Uh, used to be that all you had to have was your uh, ACR card, which is your identification card from uh, immigration. Now that's all you used to have to do, and they really run you through it kind of quick. There's no test. There's no, as long as you got a current license. There's no test. Uh, they run you through a medical, which basically you walk in, pay the fee. If you can pay the fee, you're you're good, okay. And they did actually do a quick eye test down to like the third line. I'm blind as a bat. I could still read that one. <laughs> so uh, that's the way it used to be, and so it was pretty easy to get a license. It's really hot. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Then about two years ago, two and a half years ago, they implemented a new rule, and it stated, and the rule actually reads that you have you have to be here for one month before you can apply, and at the time of application, you have to have at least a minimum of one year visa. So that would actually put you at 13 months on a visa. There are no visas here that are good for 13 months. So. This is going to eliminate a lot of people. Uh, other than like myself, I'm on a 13A permanent visa and SRRV visa. Even the Bali Bayon actually is going to fall short by about one month. So now this is causing a lot of problems. And the other part of it, like in my other videos I've talked, depending on where you are here, location, 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 has a lot to do with how things are implemented. Uh, one LTO office will go strictly by the rule. The next one in the next province de over doesn't. And island to island and province to province, it's different. So if you do get on a Facebook group or maybe you've been reading on the internet, some are saying, no, I just got my license, no problem, I'm on a tourist visa. And the next guy says, no, they turned me down because I'm on a tourist visa. That's why. Okay. Um, so it all comes down to where you're going to be. <clears throat> now, you do have the option to go to the next province or the next LTO within your province and see what they do. Uh, it may even come down to who, uh, who's at the desk that you go to that day. Maybe he's new and doesn't know or maybe he's new and he wants to impress the boss and he's going to enforce every rule uh, it's the luck of the draw uh, there's no there's no way around it other than if you're going to stay here for a long period of time this is you know going to be a long stay for you 
uh, it probably going to need to start looking into the longer term visas uh, if you feel the need that you're going to have to drive. Um, it can be a real problem. Uh, the only other small alternative I can say is that the electric vehicles here, like my, I have two electric trikes, uh, three wheelers, uh, this big one here and then a smaller one. And you don't have to have a license or registration for those as of yet. Uh, now that, that rule could change also at any time, how long it takes to implement throughout. Uh, well, anyway, they are an easy way to get around within your barangay and then actually within your smaller cities. Uh, we drive ours all over the place here. It's actually easier to get around. So it might be one way to get around it. Uh, other than that, there's no real answer. Uh, all I can say is that for those that offices that do still let people get their license, uh, there'll be less of those as time goes on. I'm sure that more and more of them will start implementing the law. Maybe the director of the region comes down on them because they still do it, or someone new takes over in that office. Uh, it's probably not going to get uh, easier for us. It's probably going to get harder for us. So there, uh, there lies the issue and problem with driver's license now. Uh, now, for banking, kind of almost the same issue. Uh, this came down because of some fraud that was going on with, uh, uh, it was an, another Asian country, uh, and they were, they defrauded. Some banks were involved, and some people with fake accounts was involved, and they managed to funnel uh, many billions of pesos. Uh, defrauding a, 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 of some banks uh, so there again before two years ago or so uh, all you need was your ACR card even on a um, tourist visa I was on a tourist visa and as soon as I got my ACR card bank was more than happy to give me an account a peso account then long around 2017 early 2017 Banks started cracking down after all this came to light. There was a big Senate hearing on all this uh, defraud that was going on. <clears throat> and many banks decided then that they would only, uh, for foreigners, that you would have to have a permanent residency. So there again, SRRV or 13A. And um, there again, the banks, they're, I believe the branches can even be owned by individual people. Uh, they comply with whatever branch uh, or whatever that main bank, you know, BDO, uh, BPI, PNB Bank, uh, all your different banks. But I believe they can actually be individually owned, and so they can actually set the rules whether or not they want to do that or not. And uh, <clears throat> so there again, uh, a few things, though, that, that uh, will m make a difference for that. If you have, like say from the United States, you can have your social security deposited into a Philippine bank here. Now that'll probably give them a little more cause to open you a, an account because one, what, one of the main things they're looking at is what, what is your source of funds? And it's often asked uh, when transferring money here and, and things of that sort, what's your source of funds? I've just said um, savings and they always accept it. But anyway, um, that's part of what they're looking for, source of funds. Another, another topic that comes up, and uh, this, could be, this could influence a lot of banks as to why they don't want to do it, is for Americans. Now, the, as far as I know, only Americans are affected this way. No matter where you are in the world, uh, you still come under U.S. tax law. So if you're in, you know, wherever, or like here to the Philippines, um, the bank that you're with has to file a 1099 and send it to the IRS in the United States uh, on you, on your behalf, to report you, whatever you have, or if you hit a certain limit of dollars uh, within a certain amount of time or year, uh, they have to report that to the United States uh, IRS system. So they may not want to do this paperwork along with the new rules that some of the banks are implementing about foreigners to begin with. They're just not real happy doing it anymore. 
Now, like I said, now you can have your your Social Security from the U.S. deposited here. And one reason they like that is that, one, they know the source of the funds. Two, uh, the rules are on that from the United States is that you, uh, it goes into a dollar account or I believe even a peso account. But it goes into an account, but you're not allowed to have an ATM card with that account and you must personally go into the bank to withdraw that money. Now that's rules from the United States, not the Philippines. Uh, so that only you are able to get to that money. If something happened to you, a girlfriend or a wife could not continue to draw money on you if you're already gone. Okay, that's the reason for that. If you strict to those rules, then they allow the uh, money to be uh, deposited here. And a lot of people do that here. A lot of guys have their money transferred in from their American bank. Uh, and that's fine too but uh, needing a bank account here for your money that you keep here or that you have transferred here uh, is, that's where the problem arises so uh, it's not good to be carrying around large amounts of money uh, you know a thousand dollars US you know is probably your budget for a month maybe uh, 50,000 pesos 50,000 is not something you want to walk around with here all the time so it would be nice to have a bank account. So there again, one bank over here will say yes, the next bank will say no. Uh, it all depends on the bank. If uh, you set something up with them where you're gonna transfer money through them, uh, bringing it over from the US, they may accept that and go ahead with it. Uh, one reason for that and for the deposit from Social Security is they're gonna make they're going to make money on the uh, on the exchange rate, so they're looking at they're they're balancing. Okay, do we want to take him? Oh, we can make this money off them. Uh, okay, so they're balancing, you know, in their interest, of course. And some of the rate the rates for uh, exchange rates are not that bad with the banks. Uh, often you can go into a, a money changer in town and get a better rate, but then you're, you know going to be carrying a lot of cash with you out in town you may want not want to do that now uh, getting back on the account for Social Security uh, what a lot of guys do and what I'll be doing I'm about a year and a half from getting my Social Security here I will have mine sent here um, you go into that uh, if you have to go in each month or how often you need to go in for your money after it's deposited into the bank, you go in with a withdraw slip and you withdraw it. You're in person, you're withdrawing it personally. And then you have a deposit slip going into a regular peso account, which has an ATM card. Uh, and it also, you can have that joint with your girlfriend or wife, if that's what you choose to do, or just personally, just yourself. And that's what a lot of guys do. That way, they're in the security of the bank, they go in, draw out their month amount, and turn right around and put it right back into their peso account which they have access to with an ATM very very simple yes you do have to go in and take care of it personally at the bank and bank lines can be a little bit long and timely here uh, hopefully if you're like me I just turned 60 I get to go to the front of the line senior uh, for seniors we get to do that so I don't think of myself as a senior until I get to a long line and then <laughs> I'm willing to say I'm a senior. Okay, so anyway, uh, there are some of the problems and how they exist right now. Uh, will they get better? Probably not. They'll probably get stricter and more throughout the Philippines. Uh, something you got to look at. Uh, I'll follow this video up with another one here very shortly with an alternative to banking as far as paying bills. Uh, it might work out pretty good for a lot of people actually I like it and a lot of other expats I've turned on to it uh, they kind of like it too it's an app and uh, it gives you uh, quite a few choices and a lot of ways to pay your bills and it's a very very uh, inexpensive uh, no fees on it and that so uh, I'll get that one out here next uh, I'll get it out shortly so that if you're sitting there going oh my god how, what am I going to do for banking well I'll give you an alternative to it and uh, 
but let's just see what that one's about. And I'll get that one out to you very shortly here. I'll see about getting this one up tonight. It's uh, April 16th here in the Philippines. Means it's April 15th in the United States. Tax day. Oh, there's something I don't miss. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, please be sure to subscribe and like and share. Alright. Bye.